because mm -hmm. according to the Bible, when the Messiah comes back, you're going to belong to us. You belong to us. Oh, this is the book of Psalms. Nice this is the book of Psalms, chapter 2, verse 8. Ask of me, and I should give, the, give thee the heathen, you're a heathen go ahead. for thy inheritance. So you're going to belong to us in the kingdom of heaven. Go and ahead. the outermost parts of the earth for thy possession. So this, this whole kingdom, yeah. it actually belongs to us. Yeah. But according to prophecy, your yeah. people, okay, we're going to rule this kingdom for a temporal amount of time in wickedness, even. Yeah. Right. See that? But in the last days, the Lord, the Messiah, you believe in Christ, right? Oh, sure. Well, he's going to destroy your kingdom. Yeah. You want to get uh, Daniel? Uh, uh, that night. Yeah, finish it. Verse 9. Thou shalt break them with the rod of iron. So we're going to have you in slavery. If you don't want to pick up, you know, berries, landscaping, hey. Yeah. Go ahead. Thou shalt break them with the, uh, the rod of iron. Yeah. Thou shalt dash them in the peace like a potter belt, uh, potter vessel. Potter's vessels. You see that? So according to Bible prophecy, You and your descendants, you belong to us. Yeah. I, I believe that uh, by Daniel, I believe that by uh, Daniel 7. I, I gotta I gotta get going. So okay. So. Now say us. I, I mean, I'll say along if I can. What's your name again? Tom. Tom. T-O-M. Yeah. Okay, Tom. Tom. So, you know, so. All right, man. I kind of I kind of think that my parents are in hell mm -hmm. because um, they they just weren't right with God. You know. Well, they they, they never will be. Because that's, that's prophecy. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Right. Okay, there is no repentance for Esau, Edom. Yeah. The, right. the wicked are estranged from the womb. They yeah. go astray when they are born. Yeah. Right. Well, it's nice talking to you. All right, Tom. Make something crooked okay. straight. Oh, yeah. How can you make something that's crooked, you know, straight? That that uh, uh, crooked serpent. Hey, but let's go back to the lesson. Psalms uh, 24 again. 24. Uh, what was it, bro? You got any questions, sir? 28. Listening. I uh, want to get real quick, uh, Job 37 and 2. Before you get into that. No, first the Bible's going to come out. Job 37 and 1. This is the right. book of Job, chapter 37, verse 1. At this also my heart trembleth, and is moved out of his place. Yeah. Hear attentively. Hear what? Hear attentively. So what was he doing? He was listening attentively. Go ahead. To the noise of his voice. And who is the voice? We are the voice of the Heavenly Father. Go ahead. And the sound and the sound that goeth out of his mouth. Yep. So what are you gonna say, sir? I have two questions. One, I believe that the existence of God is not just plausible, mm -hmm. but is probable. Okay. However, <coughs> I do not believe that a supernatural orchestrator knows me or cares about me enough to grant me an everlasting life. Let me keep this in mind. Okay. That I believe in God. I do not believe that that God knows me or cares about me. And I believe that it's deeply selfish yeah. to think that a supernatural orchestrator cares about me to give me everlasting life. Do you agree with that or no? Let's see what the Bible says. We got to go according. It's not our feelings. It's not our emotions. Because, you know, at, we're men. We're, we're still in this flesh. We get emotional at times. Whether you're I'm a not man, being we're, emotional. Oh, no, I'm giving you, like, just, uh, you know, collectively. Um, at times we might get emotional, but we always got to refer back to what the Bible says, the scriptures. We're not coming out of our our own understanding. We want to get uh, Jeremiah, where it says, lean not into your own understanding. Because when you're we very, lean... You're very well studied in, in this book. In the book, the holy book. It's not just any book, it's the holy book. It's not Harry Potter, Goosebumps, it's the holy book, which is uh, our book. It's been written and rewritten thousands and thousands of times throughout the last 2,000 years. Okay. How do you trust what's in that book? Uh, Romans 3 and 3. Okay. We trust everything that's in this book because it's happening. World War III, prophecy, it's happening. Ukraine versus Russia. Um, us, so-called Mexicans, came into slavery by yeah. the so-called white men. That's also prophecy. The Spaniards took over us. That's prophecy. Okay. The, the so-called blacks going into slavery by the so-called white men. That's also prophecy. That's all written in this book. So that's how we identify what's the truth. And we also have uh, different other books that... Back it up. Back it up. Uh, you, do you uh, know this uh, individual by the name of William Cooper? He wrote this book, uh, Behold a Pale Horse. 
and he actually uh, linked up a lot of biblical prophecies to past, present, and future events. And he was a very known man uh, who worked with the CIA once. And all that truly is coming out. Being displayed on YouTube, newscasts, TV shows, TV shows, movies. Like Bill Cooper. Uh, William. Uh, yeah, I know the name. William Cooper. He wrote uh, "Behold the Pale Horse." The year was 1991 when he wrote it, and it was published. I think it was 1994, way before 9/11. And he even prophesied about 9/11. Well, he didn't really like prophesy, but he he got data, intel about what was going to happen, and it happened 9/11. The Roman Empire, the Empire of the Edomites, by William Vesta. It was written in 1840... 1858. Oh, published 1858. Yeah. Man, that's, that's like the mid conquering era. But, okay. but to answer your, your first question, uh, it was uh, how can uh, a God have mercy on you, like everlasting mercy? Care about you. Or know about you. I want to get uh, on that Roman strain. Yeah. No, no, I'm not, I'm not asking you to talk about the book. I'm talking about what's in your head. Okay, give me Jeremiah 17. No. I'm what do you mean, no, man? I'm not talking about the book. Oh, you don't control anything here. We're, we're in control. You're not. Is you you have questions, we're going to answer your questions according to our belief. Okay. And well, if you don't believe, you could always no, no, no. walk yeah. away. Yeah, no, I will. You know what I'm saying? I will. The heart is deceitful above all things. I'm just curious what also led you to a life of zealotry. This is the book yeah. of Jeremiah, chapter 17, verse 9. Listen. The heart is deceitful above all things. The word heart in the Hebrew is your mind. Your mind is deceitful right now, dude. And desperately wicked. The heart is Who wicked. Who can know it? Who can know it? You see, because you don't want to lean on the on the book, you want to lean on what we believe in, in our spirit. For the Bible says, lean on not into your own understanding. I, okay? the Lord, search the heart. The what? I, the Lord, search the so heart. God is the one that searches your mind, says. Go ahead. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his way. According to his what? According to his way. So, according to your works, you will understand the concept, universal law, you reap what you sow, or karma. Do you believe in karma? No. You don't believe in karma. Okay, uh, what goes around comes around. What goes around comes around. So you don't believe you're going into slavery? You had us in slavery? You're going into slavery? No. I didn't. Uh, our forefathers? You want to get that you said 14? I'm not responsible for my ancestors. Well, your far for the forefathers did. So you, you will pay for what your forefathers did. Just like we're paying for what our forefathers did, we're paying it right now by serving your people. Okay? By landscaping. Picking up avocados, dishwashing, and you go do this, you went back, you, you Mexican, freaking hate your guts. Because I've worked, immigrants, you uh, know, this uh, is our land. All of yeah, matter everything fact, you're describing. Matter of fact, you're I've walking, worked, you're walking I've, in stolen land. I've worked all of those jobs that you described. Want to read that? This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 14, verse 21. You say you didn't do it, it was your forefathers. Let's see what the Bible says. Prepare slaughter for his children. For his what? Prepare slaughter for his children. For what? For the iniquity of their fathers. For your forefathers, go ahead. That they do not rise nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the world with cities. There you go. So the Bible says that you will pay for what your forefathers did. And when the Messiah returns, who they call Jesus Christ, he's going to give his man, the 12 tribes of Israel, the authority to bring your people down. Right now, we're not going to do it. Right now, it's just a spiritual battle. Two things. Right, go ahead. Number one. I find it deeply unchristian of you to level charges against me for something that I've never done. The Bible says we didn't. I could just speak as a man. But as a man, I'll be like, I, I agree. Okay, you will not pay for what your forefathers did. But the Bible, the Word of God says you will pay for what your forefathers did. Okay. Get, uh, I got this one. Yeah. This is the book of Revelations, which is in the New Testament. And right? that's called Righteous, uh, righteous Judgment. Yep. The book of Revelation, chapter 13, yep. verse 9. If any man have an ear, let him hear. You have two ears, right? Go ahead. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. You know what captivity is, right? Slavery, go ahead. He that killed with the sword must be killed with the sword. So just like your people had us in slavery, and we're still in slavery, bro, to this day. Still getting killed by the sword. For, from 1492, well, technically 1517, all the way to 2023, I'm about to say 2023, that's already 500 years of slavery, man. Still to this day, our land has been stolen. Our women are get, getting raped. They're calling us aliens, immigrants, putting us in fucking uh, cages out there in uh, San Ysidro border. 
talking about we're taking your job, yeah, I, but we're I, I, jobs, I hate that. Can't do it. See that? So these are just examples of how we're being treated as the so-called minority. Whatever. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. Yeah. He that killed with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here See, is the patience and and the faith of the saints. There you go. So right now we're being patient. Yeah. We are the saints. But you're justifying your vengeance and your anger based on a book. Want to get Exodus 14 and 4? Or 14 and 14? You're very well studied. I, I really appreciate that. Hey, the Heavenly Father is the one that gives us this, uh, this doctrine, right. man. No, it's you. This is the You're book good. of Exodus chapter 14, verse 14. Yep. The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. So, the Heavenly Father, what he's going to do to your country, is going to cause more hyperinflation. He's going to, matter of fact, he, he, March 1, he just took away 3 million uh, EBT food stamps. Yeah. That's prophecy too, uh, it's like an Ezra. More earthquakes in your country, which used to be our country, but now. You see the weather in San Diego too, how it's raining a lot. The weather, more civil arrest, Republicans against Democrats. You know who's gonna do that? The Lord, he does all these things. That's our power that's doing that. I wanna get Isaiah uh, 45 I'd like that you and seven. I like that you're getting a lot out of this book. No, this is our power. That's what this is actual. This is a spiritual weapon. That's what I meant. Yeah, and we're you're using, getting a lot out. Of we're it. using this weapon spiritually, not physically, to bring down your kingdom. How about that? Okay. Want to get a uh, Jeremiah? Oh, you got that one first. This is the you book of Isaiah, that. chapter forty-five. What is happening, man? Verse seven. You, you cannot deny it. it's literally happening right before your eyes. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter forty-five, yeah. verse seven. I form the light and create darkness. What does God do? I form the light and create darkness. God forms the light and. He Darkness, I, I make peace and create evil. Right. I, the Lord, do all these things. God's in control, man. And we're just his servants. We're his church, doing his will, prophesying about your downfall and your people, and prophesying about our kingdom of heaven, which is for the so called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. And no, no. People of color. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 15, verse 3. The Lord is a man of war. No, the Lord is a man of peace. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord Yahweh is a man of war. Go ahead. The Lord is his name. Yahweh is his name. It's not Jehovah, Yahweh, uh, Joshua. Joshua. And his son's name is Yahweh, which means he is salvation only for his people. Okay, for one second, <coughs> could we not open the book? Uh, uh, he that speak in the word is first Peter. No, one moment. Like I said before, man, you don't control anything. What? You're, you're not in control. What led you to a life of zealotry like this? First of all, what does that word zealotry mean? Zealotry? You're a zealot. You're a religious zealot. So I'm, I'm a zealot? Yes. Oh, oh, but that's according to you. No. Where are your sources at? You're... What, what source What source can you use against me? What documents do you have no, 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 let me to just prove that here. I'm a zealot? Uh, let me just... Look. Let me, uh, just look up, let me just look up the word. All right. Yep. All right. Because I could, I could, I could explain it. That's that's what the devil tried to do, bro. Hey, go, go, go read Zealot. Yeah. A person who is fanatical First and uncompromising seven. in pursuit of their religious, political, or other ideals. Oh, he's, he's speaking about the Sakari. You are fanatical and uncompromising. Fanatical and uncompromising. Fanatical and uncompromising. Okay. Your belief is the only belief. My belief is the only belief? That's what you believe, right? You want to get first Peter for 11? I don't want to hear about the Bible. I want well, to you don't want to hear it, bro. I want to know what led you to the book of 1 Peter, yeah, chapter 4, verse 11. Like you said, you don't control shit here, bro. If any yeah. man I'm, speak, I'm let controlling. You don't control shit, bro. God. If, if, any man, man, what? if any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. No, close the book, bro. If any man ministers, let him do it as the ability which God gives. The Bible says, if any man speak, let him speak about the oracles of the Heavenly Father, not close the book. So these are all the oracles, the Holy Scriptures. We're going to be out here listening to you. Bro, we've been listening to you for the past five hundred years. You want to come out here and tell us to close the book? No. Who the fuck are you, bro? Uh, sounds like you're getting a little worked up. Hey, want to get austere austerity? Because right here we speak with authority, man. Just because you see us as so-called Hispanic, so-called Native Americans, no, no, man. No, 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 no. Hey, it's not about that. We're gonna pour ground, man. I'm talking to you, man to man. I don't, I don't care hey, what your according color to the scriptures, is. we speak, we speak man to man. I don't care what your color is. That's it is not, not about, it's about. Color, is, color is not because we have even amongst a lot of our brothers, we have people that have your so-called color. It's not about color. I, I agree with that. It's nationality. No. It's spiritual. Okay. 
you're weaponizing what you read in that book. I want to get a second Corinthians, uh, the weapons of our warfare on our uh, And yet you won't answer my question. What We're going to keep bringing the scriptures, bro, because you're the devil that the Bible speaks of. What led you to this? We're going to answer all your questions, man. The second Corinthians, chapter 10, trauma, verse 4. Drug use, For the weapons of our warfare... Warfare are not carnal. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. So, I, yeah, we agree. We're weaponizing the Bible through what a spiritual means. Go ahead. But mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. You're an example of a stronghold. You're being pulled down right now. Go ahead. Casting down imaginations. Having what? We're casting down imaginations, imaginations yep. and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. So your knowledge that's trying to come against our knowledge, we're pulling it down, man. And bringing it into captivity, every thought to the obedience of Christ. So we're bringing you down to obedience. And if you don't want, if you don't like it, you want to get Luke 19 and uh, 29. This is fascinating. Hey, let's just speak about how we're entertainers to the heathens. Uh, if they don't want me to rule over them, keep saying it before me. You use really negative language when you're speaking to other people. Hey, though I speak, uh, though I be rude in speech, not in knowledge, man. This is a book of yeah, Luke, chapter 19 and 41. Yeah. And when he was come near, he held the city and wept over it, yeah. saying, If thou hast known, even thou, at least in this, thy, in this thy day, the thing which belongeth unto thy peace. <laughs> You're a very good performer. I appreciate it. You won't touch me. Oh, no, we'll be, we'll be Six feet apart. Six feet apart, man. Oh, great. Well, we're not. Yeah, I really appreciate your insights. You are a very uh, interesting zealot. I'm giving you and answers. Uh, and you're a and very I appreciate, devil. I appreciate your attempt to read. Right, devil. Yeah. Uh, well, let's go back to the lesson. Psalms 24. Uh, 